the nation's capital, the Conservative Caucus presents Conservative Roundtable, an in-depth look at today's most important issues. Welcome to Conservative Roundtable. I'm Howard Phillips. This is a special broadcast from the Marriott Hotel in Panama City, Panama, where a Conservative Caucus Foundation delegation, uh, which I have the privilege of leading together with General Gordon Sumner, is taking a close look at uh, events in Panama and the concerns which so many, us, many of us have about growing communist Chinese influence, not only in Panama, but throughout the Western Hemisphere. Uh, we're privileged to have as our guest for this broadcast John Quirk, who is an expert on intelligence and security issues and is the dean of the Diplomatic and Consular Academy uh, in Florida. And we're delighted that uh, Mr. Quirk, Dean Quirk, has been willing to join us and appear on this broadcast. John, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Howard. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background uh, in the field of security and intelligence. Well, for the last three years, I've been living over in France. I taught at the Diplomatic Academy of London. I taught the uh, Intelligence and National Security module. Before that, I taught at the French Police Academy. Uh, I was the only American teaching there, teaching intelligence and national security, and a course on anti-terrorism, mainly to Muslim diplomats, ambassadors, and uh, French military officers. And then prior to that, I had worked for 20 years in intelligence. Uh, I wrote a number of books on intelligence, a number of articles on national security. I lived in Russia, France, Venezuela, Yugoslavia, Jordan. My wife used to say I've been thrown out of every decent country in the world. <laughs> so uh, we, we decided to form a diplomatic and consular academy in Florida. There was never one before that. And we focus on diplomatic training, intelligence and national security, foreign policy, and international trade and finance. Now, one of the issues we're looking at uh, here at the strategically crucial isthmus is the growing uh, role of communist China in America's front yard. Mm -hmm. What is communist China up to in the Western Hemisphere? Well, it's a good question. When you talk about China, you have to ask the question, what do the Chinese want? And it's a, it, it, sometimes it's a conundrum. Uh, people say, well, China is expanding in the Caribbean because of business reasons. Or they're expanding in Panama, Venezuela, and the Caribbean to put pressure on the United States about Taiwan. But it really involves four areas. Chinese control of business military agreements, port facility and port development, and telecommunications. Not only in Panama, but they have relations now that are accelerating in Venezuela and the CARICOM nations, which are the Caribbean uh, countries right off the United States. What are those uh, countries in CARICOM? Yeah, CARICOM is, uh, if, if I can refer to the map, sure. Car CARICOM is basically the Bahamas, Barbados, Trinidad, St. Lucia, Grenada, who opened up diplomatic relations with China three weeks ago, and Jamaica, and sometimes Guyana. That's CARICOM. And in these areas, the Chinese have expanded dramatically in terms of the development of port facilities, signing military agreements with most of the CARICOM countries. What kind of military agreements? Uh, training of local military, even though the military in these areas is not that great and also bringing Bahamians to China for training, okay? And it's, it's nothing that's been really covert. It's been overt. Uh, the United States knows about it. And it also involves the sale of armaments. If you look at the map here, what we have here is not only Panama that... Uh, uh, You've got Hutchison Rompoa, a company closely tied to the People's Liberation Army of Communist China, which now runs the container ports at both ends of the Panama Canal on the Atlantic and Pacific sides. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is in direct violation of the Panama Canal Treaties of 1978, which said that none, that no government except the government of Panama or the government of the United States 
would be in a position to control uh, any portion of the isthmus. So the treaties are being ignored. And they've used that, Hutchinson has used that as a precursor to set up port facilities in Venezuela, Bahamas, where they own the largest, uh, free, the largest container port. There are rumors that they want to move into Port Everglades, and of course they want to expand. So in other words, the they want to go countries. into Florida. Yes. yes. And of course we have moved Southcom, the Southern Command, from Panama up to Miami, mm -hmm. a retreat mm -hmm. of sorts. Well, the Chinese have four goals, as I said. The goals are a little different. In the case of Venezuela, they've been surveying since uh, 2003 for a railroad that would link up all the way to Colombia to ship oil through the Panama Canal. They've also signed a pipeline agreement to ship oil all the way across. And there are rumors that the Chinese are surveying for a signals intelligence base in Maturin, Sucre State, which would hook up with their intelligence base in Cuba. They vacated, the Russians vacated Lords. Lords and the Chinese moved in. There's also rumors that they're looking for a signals intelligence state in Dominica, which has a 4,500. And Dominica, now. where Eugenia Charles was so helpful to us during the Reagan years, has now switched its di diplomatic recognition from free China to communist China. That's right. And, and the same thing is happening even in the United States. Several weeks ago, there were 200 uh, diplomats from Taiwan. The State Department did not receive them, apparently on orders from Condoleezza Rice, which is a signal that we're leaning more and more, not so much to China, but we're leaning more to abandoning Taiwan. Well, uh, President Bush named as his ambassador, they call it PRC, People's Republic of China, but it's really the central committee of the Communist Party, which controls mainland China, called the PRC. He named a Yale classmate, Sandy Rant, to be our U.S. ambassador to uh, Communist China. Uh, and Rant had spent his professional career promoting business ties between Communist China and the U.S. Similarly, the American Institute on Taiwan, which is their quasi-official representation uh, in Taiwan, in the United States, for U.S. diplomacy, has historically uh, been headed by someone who is very sympathetic uh, to free China. One of them was uh, uh, a fellow who uh, had been uh, an assistant secretary of defense for intelligence uh, during uh, Daddy Bush's administration, Bush number 41. Uh, and uh, now Bush has put in a fellow named Doug Paul, P-A-A-L, who's very hostile to free China and very supportive of communist China. Well, John, you're an expert in these things. Are the officials of our government asleep? Uh, have they no concern about what's happening? Well, I think the, a lot of the emphasis has been on Europe and on uh, the Middle East. And traditionally, the United States has not paid that great attention to Latin America. And this has given an opportunity for the Chinese to fill that vacuum with money. They're lobbying for a new consulate in South Florida. Uh, the Exim Bank is planning in to Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. That's where they'd like the consulate, and they've they've um, they've done a lot in Broward County. The Chinese, they uh, a Chinese company bought the uh, fashion mall, and there are rumors they're going to turn it into a technology center. They're looking to buy more land in Broward County. They're looking to expand in Port Everglades. I have a consulate. friend who's a sheriff in South Carolina, mm -hmm. and he said there's a Chinese communist factory where the communist Chinese flag flies above the American flag. Yeah, they're, they're shameless. Well, some of the companies that are in South Florida are also fronts for Chinese military. They may be a bicycle or a motorcycle company, but they're fronts for the Chinese. And the Chinese are expanding. They're, they're giving gifts. For instance, in the Bahamas, they're planning to build a multi-million dollar soccer stadium. They want to win the hearts and minds of the Bahamians. They're building hospitals and schools in Barbados. They have the largest travel agency in Jamaica. So they, it's a network. And again, that network is business, port security, telecommunications, and military agreements. That's what they want. Now, I've heard various estimates 
about the number of Chinese nationals residing in Panama. Any number you could share with us? Any estimate? No, there have been uh, rumors uh, back and forth of several thousand, uh, you know, and they're, they're in various businesses. They're in the export-import business, they're in the telecommunications field, and of course they're in the shipping field. Anything to do with shipping. And they're buying up uh, many companies, many properties. On my uh, previous visit here, I was told that cable and wireless is now uh, heavily influenced by Chinese investment. That's one of the big companies here, and uh, there are others. But um, what can the government of the United States do to deal with this? You know, by the way, this is very similar to what happened in the 70s with the Soviet Union. When, uh, when Jimmy Carter led the effort to give away uh, the Panama Canal, uh, it was a signal to Marxists throughout Central America that the U.S. was a paper tiger. And after the canal surrender, the Sandinistas got stronger in Nicaragua, the FMLN got stronger in El Salvador, mm -hmm. and it was only after President Reagan came in, mm -hmm. and after the rescue mission in Grenada, that the communist tide in Central America was turned. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, we're ignoring the area. The Sandinistas are having growing influence in Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. uh, a candidate that we supported for head of the Organization of American States from El Salvador, uh, I had to give way to a left-wing socialist from Chile. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this has to do with the sense that so many have mm -hmm. that the communist Chinese are the wave of the future of this hemisphere. John, we have to take a break here, but we'll be back right after these messages. Phillips, Chairman of the Conservative Caucus, thanks for your help as we strive to protect U.S. vital interests at the Isthmus of Panama. Panama is the belt buckle of the Western Hemisphere. The Communist Chinese know it. They know that in times of war, our Navy much reduced in size, from 600 ships under Reagan to 289 ships now, desperately needs to be able to rapidly transfer vessels between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. If the canal is bombed by a terrorist, it could be closed for three years, and we would be essentially neutered and paralyzed in terms of our, our ability to put key naval vessels in the Pacific Ocean. This is a fight we continue to wage. We make it possible. It is possible because of your help. We urge you to talk to your senators and your representative in Congress to support the work of the Conservative Caucus to keep open the Panama Canal and protect America's vital interest at the Isthmus. The Conservative Caucus, www.conservativeusa.org or 703-938-9626. Face the Truth is a production of the Conservative Caucus and is seen twice monthly on the station you are watching. We will be interviewing the movers and shakers of the pro-life movement. We hope to educate and even inspire you about what is being done in our country to protect and to promote the sanctity of life. Please watch us. Don't miss Face the Truth with Stephen Peruca and Conservative Roundtable with Howard Phillips right here on this station every week. Welcome back. I'm Howard Phillips. We're broadcasting from Panama City, and our special guest is Dean uh, John Cork, a longtime expert in security and intelligence matters, who has started the uh, Diplomatic and Consular Academy. And while we're on the subject, we were chatting off mic about uh, how uh, Miami has become, as you said, the new Casablanca. Mm -hmm. What's happening in Miami? Well, traditionally, Miami has been a backwater in terms of diplomatic studies and even espionage, but now we have over 70 consulates, probably another 60 honorary consuls, and about 30 foreign trade centers. So it's for business, it's for acquiring information, it's for the expansion of European countries, Middle Eastern countries, and of course the Chinese want to move in. 
and uh, it's uh, no longer a backwater in terms of, uh, of counterintelligence. It's a very important target for countries seeking information in the United States, the Caribbean Basin, and a gateway to Latin America. Tell us a little bit about your school and the kind of people who enroll as students. Well, most of our market is the training of existing diplomats and their staff and, uh, and honorary councils, which are increasing, and business people and lawyers that are interested in uh, diplomatic studies, national security. More and more business people that travel to Latin America want to know how to work with the embassies, the consulates, and take advantage of some of the commercial attaches that supply them with information and contacts. So we have four modules. We have diplomatic studies, national security, foreign policy, and then the most popular, international trade and finance. In terms of uh, the principal topic of our discussion, Communist China, what are their short-term and long-term goals in the Caribbean, in Central America, and in South America? Well, the, the long-term goal, well, let's look at the short-term. And by the way, yeah. let's not forget Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, they just signed a, a big deal to gain access to a substantial share mm -hmm. of Canada's uh, petroleum output. Mm -hmm. So they're all over North America. Yeah, their, their ultimate goal is to control business and economics and build that up. That, the short-term goal is to make friends with the CARICOM nations, Venezuela, Panama, continue that relationship again for business, port control, and facilities. And Marxism is really on the march in this hemisphere. We talked about El Salvador, about Guatemala, about Nicaragua, uh, and uh, growing uh, Marxist influence. But of course, you've got a close ally of, of uh, Castro and Hugo Chavez in Venezuela. You've got Lula da, Lula da Silva in Brazil, who's a hardcore Marxist populist. Uh, there are Marxist gains being made in Ecuador and Peru and elsewhere. And uh, so it's really fertile territory for communist China. And for whatever the reason, uh, U.S. influence is declining throughout the hemisphere. Yeah, it's declining in two areas. More and more of the Latin American nations are looking to the new European Union, who is going to have a new foreign policy and foreign ministry. And also, China is trying to fill that gap and subtly expand there, maybe not always for Marxism, but to befriend Latin American nations that have a beef against the United States. They'll, uh, you don't have to share their ideology. Uh, their, those whom they're pursuing can uh, work with them for the reason of their choice, because it, it enhances uh, Chinese influence. In many ways, on a much grander scale, it's similar to what the Japanese and the Germans did in the 30s leading yes. up to World War II. Yes. The long-term goal of the Chinese is to push the United States out of the Pacific. It's not even a problem with Taiwan, which will probably ultimately be settled diplomatically. They say it's to put pressure, locating in the Caribbean and Venezuela, is to put pressure on the United States about Taiwan. But the long-term goal, we're talking 10 to 15 years, is to get the United States completely out of the Pacific. That's their long-term foreign policy goal. And uh, what are the strategic priorities of the United States in the Western Hemisphere? What is our plan of action? What is our vision for the region, if any? Well, you know, the United States spent its national treasury fighting Castro and his export of communism in Latin America, and we defeated him. We expanded democracy and capitalism. The democracy now is shifting. We haven't worked at it as much as we probably should have. And they're looking at different forms of government, socialism in Brazil. Who knows what's happening in Venezuela if that continues. And they also have a variety of weird alliances. Venezuela has connections to FARC. Uh, there are rumors that Al-Qaeda is expanding. FARC is the guerrilla movement in Colombia. It's a former Marxist guerrilla movement that now fronts for the drug cartels. It's basically a business. The defense minister in Panama said recently that Al-Qaeda has a major presence in Panama. And uh, what can you tell us about their activities elsewhere in the hemisphere? Well, there's been lots of rumors about Al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups with no names expanding through Arab connections in Latin America. Given the aggressive uh, Chinese strategy for the Western Hemisphere and for the rest of the world, they're active in Africa, 
they're making deals with India, et cetera. How can the United States most effectively respond? Well, it's probably too late for us to respond in terms of shutting off technology. We lost that battle and business. And the Chinese, you can't compare them to the Russians because American businesses did not flock to Russia yeah. during the Cold War. They're much more dangerous than the Russians. Much more, much more subtle, much more powerful. They're not democratizing. Uh, you know, experts say they may not democratize for 50 years. I, I was in Beijing a few years ago, and uh, they said, uh, we'll do whatever we have to to strengthen our economy, but we will not do anything which undermines the authority and power yeah. of the Central Committee of the Communist Party. Who is strongly backed by the military who yeah. see the United States as their arch enemy. And it was very significant that uh, Hu Jintao, their new leader, took over control of the military mm -hmm. from uh, Jiang Zemin mm -hmm. shortly after he took power. Uh, Hu Jintao is a much tougher customer uh, mm -hmm. than his predecessor. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way he's been playing the Taiwan issue Mm -hmm. shows that he is both tough and clever mm -hmm. and so far he's outsmarted his adversaries mm -hmm. well we only have about uh, a minute left if you were uh, in a position to set policy mm -hmm. for the US what changes would you make well I think what I would do is one expand the budgets we have for counterintelligence which are now geared heavily towards terrorism I'd expand them to monitor what the Chinese have done. We have not had success against the Chinese. Wen Ho Li and other failures of our producing evidence and witnesses to prosecute Chinese spies. So the counterintelligence services, military and civilian need more money. Two, the only thing you can do, because we've lost the business and the technology part of it, is to continue to fund our military in a big way. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to spend money. But if we need well, a missile it, defense program, we have to have it. And, you know, it's especially important for the United States as a maritime nation to have the naval capability Absolutely. to keep open the sea lanes of communication and supply. Absolutely. And we have been dropping like a rock. We're down from 600 ships to 289, heading further down. And the Chinese are massively developing mm -hmm. their naval capabilities. Absolutely. And we're expanding our Coast Guard because of homeland security and not funding the kind of heavy-duty warships yeah. and carriers we should be. Yeah. We're going to uh, have to stop here. But after these messages, uh, we'll have a minute or two for you to wrap up and uh, give us your concluding comments. Okay. Please stay with us. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, I'm John Quirk. I'm Dean of the Diplomatic and Consular Academy in Miami Beach, Florida. And uh, we train di diplomats, honorary consuls, military and businessmen in diplomacy and national security. I'm honored to be here with members of the Conservative Caucus, a superb fact-finding group that influences policy making with our government. We're here in Panama. And we've had a number of briefings specifically related to also national security issues. And these issues in Panama involve Al-Qaeda, FARC, and the expansion of China, not only in Panama, which is a, a conduit, but also in the Caribbean, Venezuela, and even in South Florida. Thank you. The Conservative Caucus, www.conservativeusa.org, or... 703-938-9626. When you see the terrible decline in public morality, do you have a suspicion that something's gone wrong in America? Would you like to make a positive difference for freedom and for liberty? Institute on the Constitution is a historical study designed to teach you about the basic core ideas behind the Constitution. The ideas that built America. Call the number on the screen and learn more. The Institute on the Constitution, 410-768-2280, www.instituteontheconstitution.com. Here's how you can become a citizen lobbyist and influence how your representatives vote. Write a letter to your congressmen and senators. Speak out on a call-in talk radio program. Write a letter to the editor of your local newspaper and call the Conservative Caucus for more information at 703-938-9626.
We've been privileged to have as our guest today Dean uh, John Quirk of the Diplomatic and Consular Academy in Florida. Uh, John is experienced uh, in all matters of security and intelligence. He had a lot to do with the effort to rescue our POWs and MIAs. And John, in the uh, half a minute or so left, uh, tell uh, our audience how they can take advantage of your school. Well, if you're interested in taking courses in diplomatic studies uh, in anything to do with international trade and finance and national security as it's related in today's world, which is information about intelligence, terrorism, and so on, they can uh, contact us at uh, www.diplomaticacademy.com and go to our website, and uh, we'd be happy to send you Thank information. You. Thank you. And if you're interested in the kinds of issues we discuss on Conservative Roundtable, including this special broadcast from Panama City, Panama, check out our website, www.conservativeusa.org, or drop me a line. I'm Howard Phillips, Chairman of the Conservative Caucus, at 450 Maple Avenue East, Vienna, Virginia, 22180. Thanks so much for joining us.